It is important that pharmacokinetic studies are designed optimally so that we gather the best data possible to inform our models. There are many questions you need to ask when embarking on a pharmacokinetic study. What should the species, breed, age and sex of the animals be? Of course you want to conduct the study in the target species, but which breed do you choose? Should they all be of the same age or a range of ages, male, female or both? The more variable your study population, the more variable your data is going to be and the larger the number of animals you will need. Your choice should be driven by the question you want to answer. If you want to compare the effect of the pharmaceutical formulation, for example you want to compare two different intramuscular formulations, then you will want to keep your population as homogeneous as possible to avoid any other confounding factors. So for such a study you may want to select all male animals within a specific age range of one breed. On the other hand, you may want to specifically look at the effects of disease, age or breed on the pharmacokinetics, in which case you will want to choose your study population accordingly. Population pharmacokinetics is the subject of a whole other course, but keep in mind that it is an approach that can be used to look at factors that cause variation in the pharmacokinetics by pooling samples from many individuals without having to take lots of samples from one individual. Once you've selected the animals for your study, you now need to decide when to take blood samples to measure drug concentrations. You will also need to decide how these concentrations are going to be measured. The most common method is HPLC with different detection methods such as UV or mass spectrophotometry. And finally, the data need to be analyzed. But keep in mind that the type of data analysis you're going to do, be that compartmental or non-compartmental, um, should be selected a priori as it may alter some of the choices you make regarding the design of your study. In this video, I'm focusing on selecting blood sampling times so that you have the best possible information for your pharmacokinetic model. There are many reasons why you want to minimize the number of samples you take by optimizing the times at which you take them in a pharmacokinetic study. First, we don't want to take too many samples as the needle stick is painful or if you're using a catheter we need to minimize the time it is kept in place to avoid infections or any discomfort to the animal. Also in some smaller animals like cats and birds, sampling too aggressively can cause significant blood loss. Also sample analysis is expensive. I'm going to present a simple graphical method that you can use to identify optimal sampling times for a particular model. Please combine this, with knowledge, this knowledge with the guidelines that are presented in the excerpt from Revere's textbook that are uploaded in the course, um, in the course materials. There, is, uh, there are also numerical and analytical methods that are used to optimize sampling times, but these are more complex and typically performed by software programs. At the very minimum, you need one sample, one blood sample, for each parameter in the model you plan to fit to the data. So for a simple one compartment model with first order elimination following intravenous administration, you have two parameters, the K elimination and the volume of distribution, which means that you need at least two blood samples. This of course assumes that you already know that a one compartment model is the best fit for the pharmacokinetics of that drug. The more complex the model, the more samples you will need. And of course, if you're not sure which model will be the best, you'll need to take enough samples so that you can identify which one will be the best fit. The graphical approach to finding the optimal times for blood sampling involves simulating data using a known model and parameter values, which you can get either from the literature or a pilot study. And you can do this using either Excel or a software program like Phoenix. Then the next step is to vary the value of the parameters one at a time by a small amount, say 10%, and then rerun the simulation. And what you get is two plasma time concentration curves for the two different values. In this case, I've varied K elimination. Then you take the simulated data for those two curves and you calculate the ratio of the difference between the concentrations that are predicted for each time point and the difference in the parameter values. So the difference in the parameter values will be the same for each time point, but the difference in the concentrations will be different for each time point. 
and then you plot that ratio versus time. And what that gives you is a graph that shows how big the difference is in the pharmacokinetic profile at different times after drug administration. And what you want to do is ensure that you take a sample at the time when the difference is the largest, which happens to be around 10 hours in this case. So what this is telling you is because you know that a simple one compartment model with IV administration and first order elimination fits the, the data for the pharmacokinetics of your drug. You want to ensure that you take two samples and one of those samples needs to be around 10 hours. And then you repeat the process, this time varying the volume of distribution so that you get two profiles that look like this. And then when you plot the ratio of the difference versus time, you get this graph which shows you that the earlier you can take a sample, the more information you're going to have to estimate the value of the volume of distribution. So for this model, uh, you, what you want to do is take at least two samples, one as soon as possible after administration and one at least, at, uh, and one around the time of 10 hours. And then of course, if you can collect more samples in between those times and after the 10 hour, a few after the 10 hours, that would be good too. But those two samples are essential. The numerical method is similar to the graphical method, except that it's done with, a compute, with computer software so that many more variations in parameter values and more complex models can be explored. And finally, the analytical method looks at the first derivative of the concentration versus parameter, and then the second derivative of the first derivative versus time, which is beyond the scope of this course, except that you must be aware that it is a method that is used by pharmacokinetic software as well.